Hey everybody and welcome back to Game Development in the Forge. We'll be kicking off a new unit today as we start to go over asset creation. Now whether you're developing a software game or a tabletop game, you need assets! Assets are all the parts and pieces of your game that make the mechanics possible and breathe life into the aesthetic. Over the next several weeks, we'll be exploring and experimenting with various art forms, all of which can be found in modern games. And we're going to start off with some fundamentals of 2D drawing. Now, whether you consider yourself decent at drawing or not, it is first and foremost imperative that you realize that drawing is a skill. Just like programming, writing, or design, drawing is something that you can learn to do if you don't know how to already. And it is something that you must consistently practice even if you're adept at it. Now notice I said consistently and not constantly. It's important when developing any skill to do so at a healthy and consistent pace. This will save you from the burnout and frustration many feel when binging a new skill. More often than not, people who try to binge learn a new skill often become disenchanted with it rather quickly and don't consistently improve their craft. Rather, they make short, irregular bursts of effort, which results in a lot of lapsed time between practice. And true to the nature of any skill, degradation occurs between practices and more time is spent regaining what was lost than actually improving, causing improvement to take even longer. Moral of the story is, if you want to get good at something, set regular intervals for you to practice. And when it's not practice time, do something else! Don't try to binge learn, it never works out in the end. Moving on, let's briefly go over some drawing fundamentals. I want only to introduce you to these concepts so that you can explore them further on your own. Something people tend to run into when seeking drawing advice or how to get started is practice the fundamentals without any further explanation. Now I'll provide links to some other great videos that you can dive a little deeper into understanding these core principles and hopefully give you enough material and inspiration to get the ball rolling on trying out this new skill. So, 2D drawing, let's go. Now first, let's get hopefully what is obvious out of the way. 2D refers to two dimensions, height and width. Although there is no actual depth as there is in 3D art mediums like sculpting, there are techniques that can give a flat 2D drawing the appearance of depth that we'll talk about in just a minute. Now let's break down the fundamentals of drawing into four categories. Structure, anatomy, color, and light. Now let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail. When we talk about structure, we're talking about a plethora of things. There's the composition of the drawing, or rather how the elements present within the drawing are laid out within the frame. Now some things to keep in mind here are the rule of thirds, which puts points of interest on the horizontal and vertical lines of your frame. There's the use of symmetry, which the human brain finds really attractive. Leading lines are useful for directing the eye's attention to a subject. Similarly, leading room is the careful use of space around your subject, depending on which way your subject is facing. One way depth can be conveyed in 2D drawing is via line weight. Bolder lines are closer to the viewer and fainter lines are further away. In addition to composition, perspective is another vital component of structure. This comes in handy particularly when trying to accurately draw three-dimensional objects in a two-dimensional plane. Perspective is another way that spatial depth can be depicted. And there are three typical types of approach to this technique. One point, two point, and three point. The last major category in structure is the study of shape and form. It takes practice for the eye to see basic shapes hidden in more complex ones, but once you do, complex forms like human anatomy will be much more approachable and less scary. Which brings us to our next category, anatomy. Studying anatomy is especially important if you want to draw characters. Whether you're drawing human, animal, or otherworldly characters, having an understanding of how skeletal and muscle systems work together is an absolute must. Characters tend to be involved in some kind of action. This results in having to depict these muscle groups in some kind of gesture or movement. And there are very particular ways and ranges of motion that these groups tend to have. Proportion also plays a big role in the study of anatomy. The manipulation of proportion will make the difference between familiar human or animal forms and otherworldly alien or disproportionate ones. 
A common practice to get the basics of anatomy down is to do quick gesture drawings of a subject. This is primarily to bring focus to the most important curves and proportions that convey the movement of the subject. Next, let's talk a little bit about color. Chances are you'll probably want to add some color to your asset at some point. To understand color, you'll need to get familiar with the spectrum of visible colors on the color wheel. A careful study of the color wheel will reveal harmonious and complementary colors as well as contrasting and clashing colors. The use of color necessarily depends on the context and the environment that the subject is in, and colors behave differently with different surrounding colors. Whole encyclopedias are dedicated to color theory, and there are many artists who spend their entire lives dedicated to the exploration of it. For now, just get an idea of the basics and make use of the many available color palette resources online. Last but not least is the category of lighting. Studying light is closely related to the study of color, since warm or cool light sources can either drastically or subtly affect how a particular color looks. Understanding light sources, shadow, and reflection are all essential to accurately representing light in a drawing. A good understanding of light and shadow also contributes to the representation of depth, much like perspective and line weight. Whew. That's just the fundamentals, right? And when talking about games, there are generally two categories that any drawn art asset can fall under, character or environment. If you want to focus on character, all the aforementioned categories are necessary to practice and understand. If you want to focus on environment, then you could perhaps give a skip on anatomy. However, there are still plenty of principles in anatomy that apply to drawing environments as well, especially in terms of proportion. So be safe and practice all the fundamentals anyway. It shouldn't be a surprise that mastering those fundamentals and the skill of drawing takes a great deal of time and practice that falls well outside of the scope of this class. Now to expedite the creation of assets, let's take a closer look at an art form that was born out of the video game industry, pixel art. Now there are some fantastic artists out there that can do amazing things with a limited number of pixels and colors. But whether you're a pixel master or a total noob, Pixel art is accessible to all, and you can produce some decent looking assets with it. Additionally, there are near limitless resources online for learning how to do pixel art, making it, or even animating it. We'll start this week by using an awesome tool called LowSpec. Take a quick hop over to lowspec.com to find a treasure trove of pixelated sweetness. The Tutorials tab is a compendium of all things pixel art. Find resources here from ultra basics to super advanced. The Palette List tab is a quick place to find some interesting color palettes to work with. With any palette you find here, you can either download as a palette file to upload into a project later, or load the palette directly into the low-spec editor where you can start working on an asset right away. Now here's the low-spec editor screen. The editor has two modes, basic and advanced. Make sure to choose the advanced mode so that all of the features and tools are available to you. A good size to start if you're new to drawing and or pixel art in general is 16 by 16 pixels. In the center of the screen, we have our blank artboard. On the left is our tool set, and on the right is our layer hierarchy. In between the artboard and the layer hierarchy is a strip of colors that is your color palette. Now let's begin with our tool set. At the top of the list is the pencil tool, which is how we will draw our individual pixels. Simply click or click and hold on the artboard to see the magic happen. Hovering over one of the colors on your palette will turn your cursor into an eyedrop tool. Simply click to change the color of your pencil. The next tool on the list is the eraser tool. This allows us to erase individual pixels. Control Z is also a useful tool for undoing your last step. Both the pencil and the eraser tool have plus and minus symbols underneath them, indicating the ability to increase or decrease the size of the pencil or eraser. Next is the rectangle tool. With this selected, clicking and dragging will create a hollow rectangle in the same color as your pencil. The next tool is the fill tool, which will fill any area surrounded by different colored pixels. The eyedropper tool lets you select the color of any given pixel on your artboard and assigns it to your pencil, rectangle, and fill tools. The pan tool looks like a little hand and simply lets you move the canvas around. This is particularly useful if you're zoomed in. 
Speaking of, the next tool is the zoom tool, which lets you zoom in and out of the artboard. The distinction can be made with the plus and minus symbols under the magnifying glass. The last tool in the toolbox is the selection tool. This essentially is like a cut and paste. You can select a rectangular group of pixels and move it around your artboard more quickly than redrawing them all. Now, Using layers is particularly useful when creating digital art. This is much more difficult to do with physical mediums, but working on a computer makes working with layers a cinch. Layers allow you to separate the different parts of your drawing into distinctly editable parts. For example, you might separate a background from a character. This way you can hide the character and easily edit just the background without worrying about messing up your character. Or let's say your character has some distinctive features. It may make sense to put those features in separate layers so that you can edit them independently of the others. Something you'll notice that when you hover over any of these tools, you'll see a little letter in parentheses next to the tool name. This is the hotkey for that tool. When it comes to creative digital software, mastering that software inevitably requires mastering the hotkeys. Being able to simply press a key to switch tools versus spending time moving your mouse to the appropriate icon saves a crazy amount of time and drastically improves workflow. Now I'm not saying that you need to master low specs hotkeys, only that most creative softwares include hotkeys and shortcuts, including industry standard ones like Adobe. If you really want to be a wizard with these tools, Learn the hotkeys. Underneath your color palette strip is a plus sign. Pressing this allows you to add more colors to your color palette. Wow, we covered a lot, and I can't wait to see you make use of the resources we talked about today, and I really can't wait to see what pixel-perfect characters you come up with in this week's assignment. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time in the Forge.